You've lost it. Oh, <laughs> <f> <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, still there. Well done, you look at it. So we're meeting Yasin. He's an exorcist and he's going to be exercising a, a jinn. From what I understand, it's a, a demon that predates Adam and Eve, apparently. They lived in this sort of pre biblical era. This might be him now. Hang on, hang on, sorry guys. According to one study, half of Muslims in the UK believe in jinns and that they can only be exercised through a process called rukya. I want to witness an Islamic exorcism firsthand to better understand the relevance of these ancient rituals to modern day Islam. First, just explain to me what is an Islamic exorcism as opposed to a Catholic exorcism, if that makes Not sense that much difference actually. Okay. Like the Catholics will recite their prayer, uh -huh. we'll recite our prayer, and the prayers are actually very similar. Okay. And um, you'll see probably abnormal reactions within the person. And so what would indicate that something is a jinn and not sort of a mental health problem? So that's the whole thing. Is it a jinn? Okay, for us, even that is questionable. We've seen so many videos of these Rukia people yeah. just utterly talking nonsense. <laughs> Right, we can show you some videos, and it's totally superstitious. Okay, okay. And Islam kind of like came to remove superstitious beliefs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, do you believe yeah. in jinns? Do you believe in... We uh, believe in jinns. Okay. Okay, but do they actually necessarily possess people? Okay. That's another question. Okay. <laughs> Yasin explained that many Islamic exorcists in the UK convince clients into believing they're inhabited by jinns to charge huge sums of money for their services. He explained that these entities are better viewed more neutrally as harmful personalities that cause spiritual ailments like depression or suicidal thought and that reciting specific parts of the Quran or Bible can expel them. While his slightly more rational take on exorcism appealed to my scientific sensibilities, I was still a bit confused as to why he'd invited me here to document this. If a demon wasn't going to appear, what was I here to film? So I'm going to actually get you involved. Okay. Okay, so Rod, do you want to just lie down? Just there. And uh, just watch this. Okay, just relax. Okay. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Al-ardi wa la fis samaa'i wa huwa as-sami'ul 'aleem. You better off typing him. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. أعوذ بكلمات الله تامت من شر ما خرق مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. Can we press there now? No. There you go. Okay. Keep pressing. What am I looking for? That's it. <laughs> That's okay. what you're looking for. You uh, found it. Look, look, look. He's holding my hand. He's really in pain. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so that's what he's fairly intense. Yeah. We so you located a personality. Yeah. I've shown you how to remove this personality. I see. I, that's what you were looking for. I was, I was a bit confused. So the, 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 I, the personality was localized in the stomach. Yeah, exactly. I that's see. the area of affliction. So anyone who has multiple personality yeah. disorder, yeah. inverted commas, we can more or less locate that personality okay. and extract it in this manner. What's interesting for me hmm. is, is your, you know, this scientific, I wouldn't call it a skeptical approach. So you're looking for some, some, some kind of rational foundation for what's going on. But there's definitely a superstitious element to what I'm seeing. I mean, it looks very much to me like you're pulling a demon out of this guy. Do you have an explanation? What is it for you? What is it? What's inside you? What's I, the, I, the, you I don't know. I, I wish there was an answer yeah, or there okay. was something out there yeah. that would tell us what it is, but yeah. there is nothing. Yeah. Can you see? And you're just happy in that not knowing. Like, this is the, the sense well, we're that we're not I happy. <laughs> we're looking <laughs> into it. <laughs> we're looking into it. We yeah. want answers. Yeah. yeah. Yasin wants to take the superstition and faith element out of his exorcisms. He believes the words of the Bible and the Quran have innate universal power. He wanted to prove that anyone can locate these split personalities and expel them using prayer. 
even non-believers like me, because if that's the case, that would undermine all these other immoral Rukia practitioners who charge exorbitant fees for their services. That's why he agreed to meet me. He wanted to see if I could perform Rukia and also if I would respond to Rukia. Allah la ilaha illahu wal hayyul qayyum la ta'khuduhu as-sanasun wa la nawm lahu ma fi as-samawati wa ma fi al-ard man dha alladhi yashfa'u indahu billah bi idnihi ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum wa la yuhitsuna bi shay'in min wasi'i kursiyhi as-samawati wal ard cameraman would you like to press your friend because i don't know your friend but he seems out of it a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Allahu la ilaha He seems out of it, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, he is. Allahu la ilaha As Yasin probed my upper chest with his incomprehensibly strong digits, I remember feeling a creeping numbness along my left side that spread across my torso and then down to my legs to the point that it felt like I'd been injected with some bizarre epidural. It was pleasant and comfortable and nothing like the distress his other clients seemed to go through. While I remember being completely lucid and aware, there are moments of footage I have no memory of, like when I'm lying on the floor and he's tapping at my stomach. Okay, right, I'm gonna call it there. You tell me. <laughs> Wait. Wait. Oh. <laughs> Sit back. I just felt um, kind of <coughs> trouble speaking, but trouble speaking and lightheaded right now. But when you... When okay, you... so I haven't concluded and I haven't pushed it, yeah. but it's just proof of concept. These are just simple prayers that people had traditionally and um, you know, there was some kind of healing to it and it's yeah. not all placebo. So I think Yasin got what he wanted which was basically using the Quran to put a non-Muslim into a trance. But I certainly didn't. I have no idea what happened to me in there. Yasin believes that he's extracting different personalities um, that would otherwise cause a psychological and physiological harm. But he refuses to call them jinns. I do believe that at least on a subconscious level, Yasin and his clients do believe in jinns. And that's what gives his rituals their power. But that still doesn't explain what happened to me. Either way, I think there's a lot we can learn from these archaic medieval rituals if we study and explore them objectively and impartially without all that superstitious baggage, to understand what's driving all those reactions in people, to understand what's happening to them. So that's it, I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna watch all this footage again, and um, yeah, I'm gonna try and see what happened to me in there.